Welcome to the Mortgage Marketing Expert Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Treadwell. Our mission with this podcast is simple, to help you build your business and to do mortgage marketing better. Success in any business is determined in large part by our ability to learn new things. So we're here to share firsthand experience and advice from some of the most sought after experts in the mortgage industry. I'm so excited that you've joined us and I hope you enjoy the episode. For those of you that, that are just uh, kind of getting uh, getting going with this thing, we've been going for about three hours. We have about a 30 minute segment in here. My buddy, Coach Kyle Draper uh, and I are, are in Dallas. Uh, actually, I think we're in, we're in Plano, but we're in the, in the Thrive Studios and, and we're going we're gonna to talk about some cool stuff here. Uh, we're going to go this a little bit different. We, we've heard some incredible content from some incredible people in the industry, all good friends of ours. And and uh, thank you so much to all of you guys and, and those that are still coming up. But the first thing uh, that we kind of want to talk about that I, I think is, is super important is uh, what are the most overlooked practices on social media, right? We're, we all know social is important. We're all out there doing it. Uh, you know, some a little more effective than others. And so we're not here to be critical. What we're here to is, is to remind you of some blind spots and some things that maybe you're not thinking about. So, so Kyle, I, I want to kind of just phrase that as a question. Yeah. What do you think is one of the most overlooked things on social media that people need to be focused on? Well, I, th- I think t- to, if, if we can go backwards before we go forward. Absolutely. What, what you and I have talked a lot about in preparation for this is we're starting to see more activity from people on social, Mm -hmm. which is obviously a great first start, but a lot of the content that that many are pushing out there is still the type of stuff that the consumer doesn't care about until they need you. Right. Right. And so we're, we're really trying to force things down people's throats that may be two years away from needing a refinance or wanting to buy or sell a house. And so if we want them to pay attention, we've got to give them more than just what benefits us. Mm -hmm. We've got to really think deeply into where are they at in life? What do they want? And how do we provide content that's going to provide to that need? And and so in order to do that, I think that this is number one, Mm -hmm. and, and I would even rank this number one, that we as mortgage and real estate professionals we have to realize that people would be far more attractive to us if we led with leadership and not sales. Mm, that's a good one. Right. We, it's so easy to go, here's my closing photo, everyone. Yay. We closed the house. All right. Here's a new listing. Here's that same listing that's pending. Here's that same listing that's under contract. Here's that same list. Like we, we've, we've just started regurgitating all the stuff that most people don't care about anyway. Right. And and so my rule of thumb is always, if I wouldn't say it to you at coffee, I'm not going to say it on social media. Right. Right. Which means you and I might have a conversation about something that could be related to a house or related to a closing, but I'm not going to whip my phone out and go, oh, Phil, have I shown you <laughs> the pictures of my new listing? Right. Oh. They're incredible, right? Right. You want to show me your dog, and I'm like, no, 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 bro. Look at this listing. Yeah. And it sounds really silly when I explain it that way, because the safety of the screen, it it kind of gives us this ability to go. I'm just gonna say whatever I want. There's yeah. no, there's there's no fear of something bad happening. You deciding you don't want to be my friend anymore. Yeah. And so, man, it would be unbelievable our industry would get, would get raised up so high if we would just go, man, what people are more attracted to is leadership. Yeah. Not salesmanship. Yeah. And so I think that is what absolutely has to get better. And, and we can accomplish this with like last night, you and Stacy, y'all went to half price books. Oh yeah. Love half. And price books. y'all bought, y'all bought like half the store. Pretty close. Like I, 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 I was, I was nearing, nearing double digits and I'm, I'm quite sure my wife surpassed double digits. And, and you're allowed to do that. It's not it's, Barnes and Noble. It's, it's half, half price half books price. Yeah, you know? or, or less. And, and so the beauty of leading with leadership is without you having to go, Oh, now another vein of creativity that I've got to tap into. No, amazing men and women have already written millions of books <laughs> with unbelievable quotes in them from other men and women. Yeah. Yeah. And so if we would just bro yesterday, I got tagged. This happens every week. 
because one of my favorite books is called Steal Like an Artist. Yeah. And I did tons of videos about it while I was reading it. Yesterday, I got tagged in a random realtor story with her holding up the book, Steal Like an Artist. And it said, came in the mail today based on Coach Kyle Draper's recommendation. Yeah. People are still talking about me because of someone else's book. I didn't write that book. Right. Right. But they're not thinking Austin Cleon, the author. They're thinking me. Yeah. The dude that talked about it for three minutes. <laughs> So this isn't rocket science right? to put content out there for people that allows them to see us as an influence in their life, not just a salesperson that they know. You know, it, it's interesting because in that vein, you can uh, document what you're doing in your life and share other people's content and be seen as that influence and as a, as a leader. Right. You know, I, I'll give you the example of uh, Zillow obviously just had, you know, uh, a little bit of a, a change in their business model where we, we, yeah. we've, you know, they've dialed back, uh, they've eliminated their, their Zillow offers, you know, I buying platform. And there's a lot of people putting things out there, right? There's a lot of people that were, were posting snapshots of the stories and that they were, you know, putting links to articles and, and, oh my gosh, see, we told you so. And it was Renee Rodriguez mm -hmm. who, who shared with, you can see my, my Amplify sticker up here. In an Amplify group, he said, yeah, but no one's no one's tying it down. And for those that haven't been through Amplify, a, a tie down is essentially why do people care mm -hmm. and what is the challenge? And, and so I, I on his recommendation, inspiration, I did a video and said, guys, we need to be talking about why this matters to the average person. You know, right. I'm not ashamed to say I was uh, a year into the, there, there was I buying had been going on for a year. And I realized after a year that I didn't know what I buying was. I thought it was an avatar of a customer that was doing their real estate and mortgage transaction online. And we dubbed that avatar an iBuyer. Yeah. I didn't realize that an iBuyer was legitimately the, the Zillow offers and the, and the, these platforms that are buying homes for cash. And I say that because if those of us in the industry don't know what's going on, how can uh, we just assume that the average consumer knows what that stuff with Zillow means? And so you can be sharing content and then put your spin on it, put your right. narrative on it. And I'll give you one more example of what you were talking about on the, on the listing side, because part of what real estate professionals, even mortgage professionals are paid to do is create that awareness around uh, listings and, and things that they're selling. And uh, a, a realtor friend of mine that I recently met is a guy named Michael Caraway uh, here in the, the Collin County, Plano, Frisco, North Dallas area. He put a, a post out on his Instagram and it was a picture of this beautiful home. And uh, pretty sure it was one of his listings and it had this kind of white cream color brick and it had black shingles and black shutters. And he put them there and he's like, I think this house has incredible contrast. What do you think? He didn't say, hey, check out my new listing. Right. And I was really because I was kind of struck with the home. I was like, that's really cool. And I, you know, I commented on it and we ended up starting a conversation. And so in that whole you know, conversate, you can be creating awareness around the product that you're selling. Yeah. You can talk about the services that you're selling, but you need to do it in a way that people actually care, that they, they see the benefit for them or that they actually want to engage in that content. 100%. It, it's all about shifting from selling to educating. Yes. Right. Or from selling to engaging, which is what he did in that post, mm -hmm. right? Where literally all he did was add a question. Yeah, because he could have gone the other route and been like, I think this is amazing. Oh, by the way, it's my new listing. Yeah. But instead he said, what do you think? So and how many, what do you, four words mm -hmm. that completely change to stay in Amplify's voice, the tie down of that post. 100%. Or what do you think? Yeah. So what do you think? Or how about you? If you want to use three words, if right. that, you know, it's, it's going to blow up. So that's a good segue. Uh, and 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 uh, Ginger and Sue uh, earlier, we were we were listening to your your uh, uh, your talk here here on Potapaloos, and you talked about bullet points and, and making a list. So Kyle and I on this side right here, we we've got our bullet points. We we've we got listen. It. We did. We we listen and apply. Right? That's right. So uh, we got it, number one right. Come from a leadership aspect, not sales. And for right. those that are just tuning in, we're talking about the most overlooked practices uh, and, and, and habits within social media yeah. and, and using yep. social media. So that's number one. So number two, let's jump into uh, the good segue that you just got, which is you need to be engaging way more than you're even posting. And the easy thing to understand about that is guys, no matter how many followers you have, if you put a post out there or a story out there, only a certain number of people are going to see it, no matter how much it's engaged, not hundred percent of people are going to see it. However, 
if you have an audience or you have a, a target market, rather, if you, if you have a group of people that you're trying to get attention from and you go engage and comment on their posts, they're almost always going to see it. And right. so and very simply, that's the power of it. Well, and so one of one of the the quotes I see from Gary V that's that I think is one of his most popular ones is content is king. Mm-hmm. Right. He said that years ago. And that though that is true, no amount of content trumps trumps engagement. Yeah. Right. Because Gary V would probably also say, though, yes, my content is very helpful for me. It's his ability to like actually reply to people on Twitter mm-hmm. and and actually see people in public and give them a hug and let them take pictures and not be like, whoa, I'm really popular now. You need to back up off of me. Mm-hmm. Right. So it all works in this big old, you know, cohesive unit. And what I watch most realtors and lenders do is as they get better at content, they post and ghost. Ooh, there's a good one. Right. They post and they're like, yes, I did it. <laughs> Woo, I did a video. Right. And then they don't come back. And there were eight comments on that video. Mm-hmm. And all eight of those people, though they'll never say it, they want to feel validated for the effort they gave in commenting on your video. Agreed. And so if you don't return the favor, you're essentially telling them, Phil, I don't care if you ever comment on this. Yeah. And then they'll stop. And then you'll wake up one day and go, where did all my friends go? Where did all the engagement go? You convince them that them commenting isn't valuable. Right. So just stop. And it is a killer. And and one of our uh, one of our our mutual friends, I actually was on the phone with her yesterday with with Chelsea Pipes. <laughs> yep. And and so she, I stole this from her, and I try to give her credit for it. I can't say I've done it 100 percent of the time, huh? but I, I try to give her credit. But she talks about the the ten 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 rule. Yeah. Or the ten 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 principle. I think is like what I changed that word to. But it's spending ten minutes a day. Mm-hmm commenting on 10 people's posts Mm -hmm. and replying to 10 people's stories. Yeah. So the other, so the other 10, 10, 10 strategy that she has on that is take 10 minutes and do 10 across and 10 down, meaning in your stories, right? You have a horizontal Uh feed in your stories and you have a vertical feed in your feed and uh, you know, taking 10 minutes and, and do meaningful comments in there and to tie onto that post and ghost, which is, I, she is some, she talks about that as well. I always give her credit for that. And, and I've heard you talk about it as well. Guys, one of the strategies that you can do to not post and ghost is to take that 10, 10 strategy yeah. before you post and then post and then stick around and potentially do it again or engage because guys, you know, I'm not any expert when it comes to the algorithm, but I, I know what my personal experience has been. Mm-hmm. And whenever I post, if I stick around and the, that first comment or two, if I immediately reply and engage in a conversation, the algorithm loves it. Yeah. Why? Because you're you're doing what the social media platforms were designed for, which is for people to stick around and engage right. so they can show more ads, so right. they can make more money. Guys, let's make no mistake here. This is money driven. Right. Social media isn't right. to have a free place for you to, you know, check out your ex, you know, fiance or girlfriend or ex person from I thought, whatever. I thought Instagram was a nonprofit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not the, a well, see, in Instagram, what's it's not here, you know, Josh Pitts just talked about this a second ago. Uh, uh, it's not it's not Facebook anymore. It's like Meta. Yeah. Right? And see, the problem with Meta is I um, this is a complete rabbit hole. I think <laughs> Meta World Peace. Ron Artest. Oh, yeah. Every, every time I Heck hear the yeah. word Meta talk about Facebook, I think Meta World Peace, Ron Artest. I'm just going to call He might some. be benefiting more than Facebook is from this name change. <laughs> You never know. You never know for sure. So, so back to the, this engagement piece. So you don't want to post and ghost, right? You, you want right. to be engaging before, during, and after, but even outside of posting, even if you, you just take that off the table for a second, you can create a lot of attention and awareness and relationships both online and offline mm-hmm. just by actually engaging. Yeah. Well, and the, what I love about the 10, 10, 10 strategy is 10 of those are public, mm-hmm. right? When I comment on somebody's post, all their people can now see me. Right. So if I go above and beyond just going, right, <laughs> thumbs up emoji, if I actually say something with intellectual value, that's going to end up in a couple of their friends following me or engaging with my comment, right? And so I'm benefiting publicly from those opportunities. Right. The other 10, when we reply to stories, whether on Facebook or Instagram, 
that's taking us directly into a private message, a direct message. Yeah. So that now we can begin to cultivate that one-on-one -on -one relationship opportunity. And so you're getting the best of both worlds, which is probably why Chelsea designed it that way. I mean, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's almost so logical. It looks like it was intentional or something. Yeah. She might know, you know, <laughs> she might have a future. She might, she might have a thing or two going and, on there. And that, that rolls us into the third thing that I believe is incredibly mis leveraged inside of social media is just the power that social media gives us for one-to-one -one communication. Can I just talk about for a second? Again, we're going to, you're really good at segues, right? I've, I've done a couple of podcasts and been on a couple of podcasts. Every single one of these, it's almost like you, you've, you've, you thought this through in this list that we've, we've had created for like 11 or 12 minutes now. This isn't our first rodeo. <laughs> So yeah, here I keep throwing us off track. So one-on-one -on -one communication. So, so talk about that for a well, second. So all of us, anyone in sales, in my opinion, we all believe that the ultimate place we crush it is across the table from somebody. Absolutely. Put me in a room with someone and they will love me and buy what I have. Mm -hmm. I believe that's true about me. Everyone I know that's good at sales is going to say that about themselves. Absolutely. Right? So with that being said, Social media in general is not one-to-one, -one, it's one-to-many. And so it just feels different. But when I show up in the DMs, right, when, when I go one-to-one -one with you and I don't, guys, please, for the love of all things, like, like when, when we talk in a minute about the ways to use one-to-one -one communication in DMs, please do not ask us the question. Oh, like, do you record like one, one take of it? And then you send that to 50 people or, <laughs> or do you actually be a human and like call someone by name in the video? Yeah. Right. And so this is the power of this. I can't tell you how many CEOs or just C level people in companies that I've been able to actually put a touch on because I don't call them like yeah. we would have done 15 years ago and get the gatekeeper that says no. I DM them yeah. and I do it on video and I'm intentional about like what I have on or where I am so that it looks and feels different than right. probably the other 10 videos they might've got that day. Sure. And it's unbelievable the amount of responses that I get. And so we've got to be using the one-to-one -one communication inside of direct message, regardless of platform or even using video in text messaging. Yeah. Well, so so two things come to mind. One, video and text messaging is a great way to practice video. Right. Right. And we, we'll get into the over the com, overcoming some of that here in just a second. But guys, social media is social more so than media, or it should be. And I think we focus so much. They didn't call it media social. Right. Exactly. The yeah. adjective here is social. Right. right. Media is the platform for you to be social if we want to get granular yeah. in the definition yeah. here. And the reason that I mentioned that and, and, and people are like, yeah, I know, but do you? Mm. Because we're, we're out there uh, interacting with people one-on-one -on -one in one way. And then mm -hmm. we go on social media and it's, I, 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 the comparison I use is when you get in a car, right? There's people that have like severe, legit road rage. And I don't think that most of the time those people are like angry people in person, right? It's like we get behind the wheel and something happens and all, all, rules of how we engage with people go out the window in any any human interaction ability and i think that a lot of that's happening on social media and it's not really talked about all yeah. that much we're we're salesy and spammy and, and people are having conversations about well i just don't get any any anything from social media or you know i post stuff but nothing's really happening i'm just doing it so so that you know people can see it out there yeah but are you having conversations or are you putting a bunch of commercials Right. What happened in, as, as a kid, if, if there was too many commercials, what'd you do? You change the channel. People right. are stopped listening because all you're doing is talking about your listings or your mortgage loan programs or whatever else. Well, it, this is, this is the biggest thorn in my side as an educator of social media, mm -hmm. right? In our space, it's my job to help you guys overcome what we're talking about. Yeah. And this is my greatest struggle because what, a realtor or lender talks about with at coffee with someone mm -hmm. is not what they feel comfortable talking about on social media, mm. but it should be the same. Right. And then the opposite is true. What they talk about on social media is not what they would talk about 
one on one with someone. Yeah. And so it blows my mind just how we we just have this backwards, right? Every realtor and lender that I that I know, or at least a lot of them, are gonna say, like, well, I just don't know what to talk about. But you go to two hour coffees with your friends. You don't take note cards in, right? And you start thumbing through them and you're like, so Phil, what's your favorite color? Ooh, purple, mine too. All right? What's it? What, what, what? Like, yeah. That's not how we have conversation with people. Right. And so somehow, and, and this is what I think it is. Someone convinced them when they started in this industry that social media is an extension of your ability to sell, not an extension of your ability to relate. Mm, that's good. And and that's the problem because they were led poorly, right? And and that's it. They were like, hey, look, see that? That's Facebook. That's Instagram. That's TikTok. That's YouTube. Go sell there. Yeah. And that's not the way they're leveraged. Yeah. And and so we've we've got to be very, very intentional about using one-to-one communication to truly be human, you know, a human with people. Yeah. My favorite thing to do is send birthday videos. See, I do that. I love that. And 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 then I even take it a step further just because I'm my personality's silly. Yep. It, you know, I always pick a funny filter. <laughs> I'm not a good singer. If you are a good singer, try to sound terrible so you don't just look like you're bragging in all of your birthday videos. But I love, you know, the Facebook has a filter where there's like a monkey sitting on your head, like picking stuff out of your ear and eating it, like while you're on camera. <laughs> I love it. There was one a while back where I got to be a drag queen. And, and so I loved singing happy birthday as a drag queen in Facebook messenger. Every single one of those solicits, solicits a response from the other person. Absolutely. And it's, it's weirdly enough, I've made money sending videos of me as a drag queen, singing happy <laughs> birthday to people <laughs> because it's me as a human, yeah. not me as someone selling something. So, you know, hey, hey, Phil, I, could I, I ask Kyle a question? Absolutely. I'm sorry. Jim, Come on, Bobby. You too, man. Kyle. Where do I get those videos of you drag queens? I can send them to my client. <laughs> Dude, I, I got, I'll have to go get them. There, I, there's hundreds of them. I'll have to go look them up in my messenger, but I will send you one. <laughs> Dude, I would pay it is, for that it, one. <laughs> it is um, the grossest thing you've ever seen in your life. So so I, I think that there's a there's an older social media account of Kyle's that has been blocked by a lot of people because he sent these videos out there. Oh, there's no like, doubt. Absolutely not. There is <laughs> no doubt. Wow, Kyle! I didn't know you were rogue, brother. We are, we, we are, this is a family atmosphere. Atmosphere we got going on right now. So. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I wear clothes in the videos that I do. You know, yeah, it just depends on clothes. how I'm feeling. Well, you know, so to to wrap this up, Fabi, we we want to we want to be a good steward of the time because I know we got some stuff going on here. We there's there's one mm-hmm. last point that we wrote down here that's very easy, Kyle. Please. What 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 is the last thing that people need to to focus on here? Do more video. Right, that's it. Guys, I'm coming to the camera. I don't care if you're watching this and you do video on regu- on a regular basis. You cannot create a habit doing it once a week. That that is not how habits are formed. And so I now, just for me personally, I do video almost every day. Whether it's in my stories on TikTok, it's a reel, it's an IGTV episode, we're live on Instagram right now. We might, we might, I might go live on Facebook, but some form of video content every single day. Phil, here's why. Because video is the only form of marketing that works for me, mm-hmm. whether I'm working or not. Yeah. I have an army of Kyle Drapers <laughs> that don't eat like Fabi hadn't eaten today. They never <laughs> eat. My army of Kyle Drapers, they never eat <laughs> and they never sleep. Yeah. And you know how much money they cost me? Nothing. <laughs> And so when people find out about me, I don't have to convince you of anything. I don't have to do a song and dance for you because you've already done your research. You've already looked me up and you've already seen different videos of me with different backgrounds. You've caught my kids in a video. You've seen a video of you and I. So if they know you, then they know if they love you, then they're going to like me. It's unbelievable just the power that it gives us. Yeah. But we can't overcome our own insecurity and keep doing it. And here, here's here's a news flash for everybody in, in closing. The the fear that you have or the insecurity you have of how you look and how you sound is how the entire world, all of us, see you and hear you 
every single day. Yep. And the best part is if, if someone's following you, they already like you. They don't even yep. care. So just get over it, post, do more. That's it. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you heard something today to help you generate more leads, market yourself more effectively, or have an overall more efficient business. Please connect with us on social media to see our mortgage marketing tip of the day. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Mortgage Marketing Expert or on Twitter at Mortgage underscore MME. We have a lot of other amazing guests planned, so check out our other episodes and don't forget to subscribe to the Mortgage Marketing Expert podcast.